is Norbert Rodenkirchen. I'm a flute player and uh, specialized on medieval transverse flutes. I'm also a long time member of the Ensemble Sequencia and so I'm also part of the very interesting project of bringing the Boethian Metra back to sounding life. On the Boethius project I play on three different kinds of medieval generic transverse flutes. So the one is made by Boris Burney, a modern flute maker in Canada. It's a medieval flute which is in Berlin in the museum, but it's later than the 11th century. And I have a generic flute, six hole pipe, that's the usual type of transverse flute in a Pythagorean tuning. This one was made by Giovanni Tadino and the third one, a slightly bigger one, um, I also use a lot. When I have all these flutes in different sizes, I have to choose um, which one to use for a certain song or for a certain instrumental piece. Why do I have to choose? Because these are modal flutes, which means it's not a flute which fits all the modes. It's possible to play more than one or two modes, but it's more convenient and also it's needed to change the flute if you go to a completely different mode. When we talk about uh, medieval transverse flute, we are very much depending on iconography. And so um, we have to look at different sources from different centuries. And the most important for medieval flutes are from the 13th century. But if you go back earlier, we already have to go to Byzantine origins and there we find very interesting examples of transverse flutes which also show us it was a very important flute which uh, seemed to have been very inspirative for the, for the rest of the world to copy it and to use it. So here are 11th century instruments from Byzance. And interestingly enough, we don't have any music from Byzantinium uh, survived as regards instrumental music, but we have these very interesting pictures. In this little video, we would like to perform a little snippet, a little extract of the song O Stelliferi Condito Orbis, which is a hymn to the creator by Boethius will be sung by Benjamin Beckby and I will be the accompanist. For that song I uh, made a little introduction which was um, mainly inspired by the, the work we do together. So we share our wishes about the energy, which energy should a certain song have. So this is one part which demands a creative approach by me. So I have to shape my introduction in a way that the singer has it as a kind of bridge to go into this uh, song. But also it is necessary to know what the song is. It, I, I have to have it internalized so I can use some of the modal motifs of the song. And that's actually what I did. So the introduction, of course, can be different from version to version. And in concert also um, it, it happens like that, but it's also mainly fixed. So it's a process which we call extempore, that it's not completely improvised, it's more or less fixed, but it can also change according to what we decided on, which we, version we would like to do. So I could also play another introduction.
When I accompany a song, be it um, in, a, in a function of alternating with the voice, which is something that I wait until a singer breathes and I make a little bridge to, to glue together some vocal phrases and give the singer a little rest. But it's also possible to, to hold a note, especially if it's a, a goal note, if it's a, if it's a essential note of the mode, which I can intensify just by doubling it. But it can also be uh, possible to develop the heterophonic accompaniment into a kind of improvised little polyphony at some moments, not all the time, but sometimes the resonance leads the instrumentalist to a very natural second tone, which creates a symphonia to the vocal line. And so that's not the same as uh, what we think polyphony in a modern sense. It's a polyphony which, uh, which uh, naturally evolves out of heterophonic accompaniment. So here in the Boethian program we have of course no instrumental music by Boethius. We are just the songs. For this project we included a few sequences which were used in England at that time in the 11th century and made instrumental versions out of it, either for flute solo or for the whole group with harps and flute. Just to give a little example, I will uh, play a little phrase from a sequela, which is a textless sequence called Stanz a Longue, which is also on the CD, and it's, there it is a trio piece, but now I, I play a few phrases just for flute. 